Today I'm going to show you how to take a photo of a gun and turn it into a pop art icon. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find us on Twitter at Flurn. We make learning Photoshop and photography fun. We do. Today we got a really cool episode for you. We're actually taking an image, um, if you guys caught our pop art image of Marilyn, that you'll know we had a little bit of fun photographing a gun. And this is another series that we're doing. Just a really quick edit today. I'm gonna show you guys some really cool things on how you can take a photograph and make it into a pop art image in a totally different way than we did the Marilyn image. I'm also gonna show you some really cool things we can do with swatches in case you wanna save your colors for future reference. Let's get into the Photoshop episode. All right, so here's our images that we're gonna be working with. This is the image that I already made before this episode, so I'd know about what we're doing. So we're gonna basically recreate this. We've got a photo of a gun here, taped to a light stand, and the Flurn logo. Everything else we're gonna make completely from scratch. So when I'm doing this, I know that we kinda of like, I'm gonna recreate this, but I've already like chosen my colors relatively carefully. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this. It's gonna be amazing. We're gonna show you how to do this in just a, just a minute. So let's say that I want to use these colors in a new document. Let's say I want these colors to be saved and you know, a year from now I always want these colors, like they're the, your company logo or something like that. A really great way to do, um, to do that is just go to Window and then down here to where you say Swatches. And it's going to come preloaded with quite a few colors here. And if you want to add another color, you can grab your, just click right here in your foreground color, and if you go into your document, it'll turn into the eyedropper and you can just kind of pick the color. So we'll say OK. This is our foreground color, and then I'm gonna click the new swatches button, and you can see it's gonna be pink, and we'll just hit okay. You can name it or not name it, it's either one, it's totally cool. So now we have that pink swatch. Let's see, let's do this again, and let's click on this red, so we'll have exactly the red that we want, and we're gonna hit new as well. So we've got a pink and a red, Black and white I think I can take care of on my own. Those are the default colors of Photoshop. So a really quick way to like save colors. Now we can, let's just go ahead and minimize this out so we can see like, we don't need this anymore. We got the colors from it, stuff like that. And uh, we'll get into the episode. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to actually like load those images as, uh, as your swatches. Okay, so first things first, let's go ahead and full screen this. So we're gonna hit F for command, or sorry, F for full screen. And I wanna cut this gun out. So we're gonna create a new layer here. And I'm just gonna grab my lasso tool. Now there are a lot of ways you can cut this out. This, in this case, we're gonna do this a very simple way because all I need is like the gun to be in silhouette. I don't need a lot of detail. So I'm just grabbing my lasso tool here and there we go. Just kind of like painting, clicking right around here. And this is my polygonal lasso tool, by the way. Oh, there we go. Sometimes this tool just kind of like does something funny, like it'll It'll click on a point. You can hit backspace, by the way, to like undo a point. But if you actually if you accidentally close your uh, close your selection too soon, it'll like overlap on itself, which I don't like a lot about that. And then anytime you can hit enter, and that will um, that will close your selection. All right, let's grab our brush tool, sample that color, and I'm just going to paint right over there. Doesn't really matter what we do here. Um, we're just kind of just very simply getting rid of these things. So painting with the background color in this case is totally fine. I am on a new layer. So if you're like, that's so destructive, whatever, I'm on a new layer. So take that. All right. Now what we're going to do, um, basically I'm just going to make this black and white. So I'm going to shift click those two layers and hit command E to merge them together. Shift command U is going to make this image a black and white image. Now let's go ahead and load an adjustment layer. You can do this with an adjustment layer or you can just do a levels adjustment right on the layer. I think I'm gonna do that, why not? We don't do this often in Flurn because it's destructive, but in this case, it's okay. So we're gonna hit Command L. The reason it's okay is because this is not like a full color photograph we're trying to take. All I need is like a black print from this gun. Like it's just, I want black and white. And in this case, it's totally fine to be destructive. Okay, let's bring our black level up and then we're gonna bring our white level up right about there. Now, if you don't want to like slide this around and kind of guess, you can actually click on this white eyedropper and then you can click on your point that is to become your white point. So that becomes the white point and now we can bring our black point up something just like that. All right, that's looking really good. So we hit OK and um, yeah, there we go. I think that looks really, really nice. Now, if by chance you do get something like this, guys, where it's a little bit of gray here, is a cool trick. You can actually use your brush tool, B for the brush tool, paint with white, but if I paint white everywhere, you can see it's gonna cover up my gun, right? But if I change my layer blending mode from normal to something like overlay, 
it's not really going to get my blacks, right? It's gonna like paint with the overlay effect. And in fact, it kind of like actually makes it a little bit nicer. Um, so it's just, it's overlaying the white over top of the black. So this won't work on a blank layer, by the way. You have to do this on the layer you're actually editing. So we'll just paint white right over top of there. It's gonna kind of give us more of that look and it's gonna get rid of some of that gray for us. All right. That's very nice. And you can use this for like cleaning up layer masks and things like that as well. Okay, so now that we have that selected, let's go just go ahead and grab, just, I will say though, because this has happened to me in the past, if you do change the blending mode of your brush, as soon as you're done with that blending mode, change it back to normal because you'll, I tend to forget about this. Like I'll, I'll go to use my brush tool. I'm like, why isn't it working right? Blah, 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 blah. And I get angry and I start kicking people. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I didn't change it back. So now that we have our gun and it looks like a silhouette, what we're gonna do is select this out and put it on, put it on its own layer. So I'm gonna go to select and then we're gonna go down here to color range. And I'm gonna click right here on the black and we'll just bring our fuzziness down. So it's not selecting, it's basically just selecting that black, which is good. All right, we're gonna hit okay and then I'm gonna hit command J and that's just gonna duplicate this onto a new layer. Now, there's sometimes when you could use blending modes to just have the white or the black disappear, but in this case, we actually do need those, uh, we need it to be on its own layer and we need it to be transparent because it's supposed to be going over top of the pink. All right, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Now, what the next thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and load up our swatches again. And here are the colors we had in our swatches. I'm gonna hit Command and create a new layer. Let's grab our swatch color and then I'm gonna hit Option Delete and that's gonna fill with our swatch color. All right, very cool. And you can see our gun now is just nice black gun and um, it's, it's on the pink, so it's got a pink background. So let's go ahead and transform this to how we want. I'm gonna hit Command T. We're going to rotate around this way and then I'm gonna right click and say flip horizontal. All right, and we're gonna hit enter there and that looks pretty good. Now I'm gonna look at our reference here, which is this image right there. Okay, so now I know we need another copy of our gun, so I'm gonna hit Command J on the gun, and then we're just going to, for the time being, I'm just gonna move it over here. Now I wanna color this one red, and then we're gonna color another one white, right? So this one, how do we color this whole thing red? Well, there are a lot of ways, but I wanna show you guys how to lock the transparency of a layer and fill with that color. So if I just, if I start painting on this layer, let's just say I grab like this red color here, I start painting on the layer, it's it, totally, it's acting normal, right? If I lock the transparency of this layer, it's not gonna allow me to paint on transparent pixels. Now, it's only gonna allow me to paint right here on the, it, on the pixels that were already laid down, which is really nice. And this is the, the lock right here. So let's just grab our swatch color. Let's grab this red, close that swatch, and I'm gonna hit Option Delete. And we're gonna fill it with that red. So now we have that nice red. Okay, I'm gonna hit Command J again. We can lock the transparency on that. D for the default colors, and then Command Delete will fill with white. All right, so now we've got a red gun, a white gun, and a uh, black gun. All right, so let's see our reference again. We have the white gun in the back. Okay, so that'll be the bottom most layer. There we go. And then the red gun is under that, and then the black gun. Okay, so what we want to do, let's go ahead and bring this red gun in here, just like that. All right, and then basically we wanna just push them out. Okay, so the red gun, we're gonna hit Command T on that, and I'm gonna use my little move tool here, um, the little pivot point, and we're gonna just bring that down. All right, so I'll show you guys how to do this up close. We're gonna do it with the white one. Basically, I'm having the same place on the trigger line up for each of the three. So the white gun now, I'm moving this around, so I'm gonna line up this bottom point here on the trigger, Hit Command T, and then you have this little pivot point here, and you can move that to where you want all three to line up. So I'm moving that there, and then we're just gonna rotate even more, just like this. All right, very cool. So here we have, the nice thing about this, because we put these on transparency layers, is you can see through the actual transparent areas, and that's what's gonna complete this Andy Warhol type effect. Let's grab our crop tool, and I'm just gonna put like a little bit more of a, um, you know, like an art crop on this. Beautiful. We'll, we'll hit enter and we're good to go. Let's go ahead and group those layers. And then I do want to put like a border around this because I think it would look really good. So on a new layer, let's group that with itself. I'm gonna double click and call this border. We're gonna make a selection here. So a marquee selection around the entire 
um, around the entire image. I'm going to go to edit and then down here to stroke. Where is stroke? Oh, not allowing. Maybe click on the layer you want first. Okay. You cannot stroke on a group, Aaron. You should know that. All right. We'll just choose our color and then our width. Let's try about 20 pixels. And we're going to do this on the inside. So I'm going to hit OK. OK. Let's do, I think we can do even more. So let's go to edit down here to stroke and we'll try 40 pixels. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then on a new layer, I'm going to give it like this, you know how they do the white on the bottom. It's like, oh, it's so fancy. So I just created a marquee selection tool with a white area on the bottom here. And then Alt or, sorry, Command Delete fills with my background color, which is white in this case. All right, we're looking more artistic by the second. And then I'm going to go in here and with just a regular soft edge brush, I'm going to choose this color here and I'm going to assign my name. So, um, so it's worth a lot of money. <laughs> Boom, assign my name. And then we want to like put a little like slogan, hold on. There we go. We want to put a slogan down there, right? So we'll just grab our text tool. So I'll type this and we'll type caps lock this. All right, achieve the impossible. And uh, we're gonna hit Command T. We'll, let's make this a little bit smaller. And we'll pick a font that actually is not that one, just anything else besides that one. I'm totally okay. Uh, Helvetica, and we'll take off the faux bold on that one. There we go. We'll size this down. And our color here, let's just have like be a, a light gray. Great. Now, there's some really cool tools you can use to align things. Like I want this to be centered with that, and I want those both to be centered on this piece, right? So here's my signature and here's my text. So I'm going to command click the two of those and then click on your move tool and now you have your alignment option. So I can click on this align button and it's going to align those with each other. So my my signature is now aligned with my name. Although I don't think that it looks good. So I'm going to bring my signature to the right. I think technically it is aligned, but I just I think visually it looks a little bit better farther to the right. All right. There we go. That looks good. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to group the two of those layers together, okay? And we can now, either you can make a new selection or you can just choose something that is the entire width of the image. And in this case, this white bar is the width of the image. But I'll show you guys just in case how to do this, like if you, if you didn't have something that's the width. You just create a new layer and then fill it with, you know, any color you want, right? Let's make it a little bit less visible. So this layer is completely full with, a, you know, it's just an opaque layer. I'm going to command click these two now, and then I'm going to do the align. Okay? And so what it's going to do is it's going to align this group to the center of the width of the entire thing. I didn't really need to do that because I already had this that was the full width, but I'm just showing you guys in case your images, you didn't already do that. And then you can shift click the two of those and then align them on the horizontal as well. So you could like left align, bottom align, center, center. All right. There we go. Looks really, really cool. And now, all we have to do is take the Flurn logo, which you guys don't have because you don't have Flurn like I do. But I would give it to you if you wanted to promote the company. <laughs> and I'm just going to like stretch it and um, put it right down there because I think that that looks good. And let's go ahead and just, um, there we go. I'm going to align that as well. So the Flurn logo here along with the bottom strip, we're going to center align those. Great. And then our guns. We're going to just bring her a little bit more to the right. All right. And that looks awesome. All right. Very cool. And we can see that really didn't take too long. And we did this from basically just a regular photograph. So we took a photograph. Remember, we ran that levels adjustment layer. We took it out of the background. We duplicated that on the new layer. And then we used that really cool lock transparent pixels. So we color those things. And then we got this. So this opens up a huge possibility. Anything you're photographing that has lights and darks, you can totally turn into a piece of pop, pop art just like this in a few minutes. You could do people's faces. You could do just anything you guys can think of, guys. It's so much, so much fun. Thanks so much for watching Flurn. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, subscribe to our YouTube channel because we make videos like this all the time.
we're gonna shove them in your inbox so you can learn Photoshop like a boss. Comment down below, let us know how we're doing, and share this with your friends who might be interested in learning Photoshop and photography. Thanks so much for hanging out with me, guys. I'll learn you later.